Hey, what's up? My name is J.M. Chaley and welcome to my channel. This week, I'm going to do a weapon spotlight. I haven't done a weapon spotlight in a long time. You know why? It's because when I was doing them more frequently, I was writing my first, um, my first manuscript, which was A Flower in Hell, um, that I'm querying right now. And that is a medieval fantasy. Um, I'm not going to get into all the details. I'm hoping it will see the light of day one day. I'm trying to get that one traditionally published. Um, so I was doing a lot of, like, uh, weapon spotlights based on that, because it was in the genre I was writing in, um, so you were getting a lot of weapon spotlights. But, I recently got back from Ireland, and the trip was amazing, and, um, I happened to be writing this story, you may have heard of it, called The Unlife of Lisa Cooper, and Lisa actually uses a shillelagh. So that's what I want to talk about in today's Weapon Spotlight, the shillelagh. Um, it's an Irish fighting stick, sometimes uh, compared to a cudgel or a club. And in my setting, I have vampires use weapons to supplement their other attacks. Because, you know, when you have a being that can heal themselves, um, sometimes it's a good idea to... Use a sword or a gun or something like that, which can incapacitate someone for a while until while they're trying to heal, and you can kind of finish them off. So Lisa does use other weapons, and among them is a shillelagh. And especially if you're reading The Vampires of 1863, which is the prequel series to The Unlife of Lisa Cooper, you're going to get a lot of shillelagh action in that one. Let's talk about the weapon itself. Now, the shillelagh is more than just a stick. You know, it wasn't like you're in Ireland and you pick up a stick and you hit someone with it and you say, ah, me shillelagh, right? No. The shillelagh was a crafted weapon that was chosen, uh, hewn, carved, treated, cured, refined, right? Some shillelaghs took years to make, in fact. So I want to get into the history, how they were made, how they were used, the different fighting styles, and definitely stick around for this video because I'm going to reveal something that I think most people don't know about the shillelagh in the way of how it was used in combat. This is something that even when I started writing The Unlife of Lisa Cooper, and I thought, yeah, you know what, I'm going to pick up a book on shillelaghs just to kind of get my feet wet a little bit and learn a little bit more about how they were actually used, I was very surprised to find out uh, one of the ways it was used. And I want to talk about that in this video. So stick around. I got a lot of cool shillelagh stuff for you. So the shillelagh is typically used from the blackthorn tree. Very, very hard wood. Um, sometimes used from a branch, sometimes used from the root itself. You basically chop off the length that you want, and then the, the wood was straightened. And that was done through heating it up with some moisture. And you basically take all the little curves out of the branch or the root, and you know, with, with heat and water, you can make it a little malleable, straighten it out. Um, and modern day shillelagh makers put things in a, put them in a vise and actually bend it into shape. I'm not sure that, um, you know, the, the Irish of the 19th century had all the wood shop tools and whatnot. So they may have had to get a little creative with how they did it, but the, 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 uh, the wooden shaft was straightened. Sometimes the, uh, the, the, the tip was kind of carved down more into a point, not like a stabby point necessarily, but definitely tapered down into a, a smaller ferrule. And the tip was honed in, into either a handle, like a, like a walking stick, or into more of a, a rounded sort of club-like object. From there, it was dried out, set out to dry, and then cured. There were a couple of ways that it could be cured. One of them, the most popular way, was to put them in a chimney. Not the fireplace, but up in the chimney. And it would sit up there for months, several months, sometimes years, 
collecting soot and ash and all of that accumulating on the shaft of the wood, making it much, much harder. Sometimes they would brine them, put them in a basin of salt water and let them sit in there for months, getting hard. Um, sometimes they used dung, ash, whatever you know they kind of had on hand to, to, to treat the wood and cure the wood to make it as hard as it possibly could be. And that's where the typical black coloration of the shillelagh came from. If you see uh, old, old shillelaghs, they'll have the black shaft, and that's usually from the soot or ash that was used. Um, now, why did the Irish use shillelaghs at all? I mean, it's, you know, as far as a, a stick goes, that, they, that sounds like a pretty impressive way to use a stick, make it as hard as it can be, and smash things with it. There's a video of a guy that uses shillelagh to smash coconuts. You can go... YouTube that one afterwards. It's pretty cool. So these sticks got very, very hard if they were treated and cured correctly. But why use a stick? In the 19th century, that's when the shillelaghs were, came to prominence in the 1800s. They had guns. Hell, they had swords. They had cavalry stores, swords still. They had pistols, rifles, you name it. They had cannons. Why would you use a shillelagh? <laughs> Well, the answer is pretty much simple. Ireland was still under the yoke of British rule, the whole of Ireland, not just Northern Ireland. The whole of Ireland was under the yoke of British rule, and they never much cared for it, the Irish. They always wanted to get out from under them, and they rebelled fairly frequently. They just didn't want to play ball. They didn't want to conform to their flavor of religion. They didn't want to bow down to the queen or the king or whoever was in charge at the time. They just wanted to rule themselves. Um, and the British came up with all different kinds of ways to put the Irish in line. And that could be a whole video unto itself, believe me. But one of the things they did was to outlaw weapons. Not to say there were no guns in Ireland, but it was really hard to get them. And if you got caught with one, the penalty could be severe. They could ship you off to Australia. Depending on what you did with the gun, you could be hanged. It was pretty rough. So most people didn't have a gun, didn't have a sword, they couldn't get their hands on one if they wanted to. They were simple farmers. They didn't have access to some black market in France where they could be like, hey, ship me some rifles. You know, they didn't know anybody overseas. They just knew their neighbors. And how easy would it have been to go out into your backyard and cut a branch off of a tree, stick it in your chimney for a couple of years, hone it into this hard, durable fighting instrument, and there you go. And if the British happen to come along, or your landlord, most likely, your loyalist landlord, and said, what do you have? You're not supposed to have a weapon. Oh, this is just my walking stick, right? Some shillelaghs were about 19, 20 inches. Some were the size of a walking stick, a cane or something like that. And that's how many Irish got around that rule of no weapons. Now, most of the weapons were used not on the British, ironically, not even on their landlords. That would have gotten them thrown off the land or probably hung, hanged. Um, <laughs> but they used them on each other to settle disputes. Um, this was called faction fighting or the faction wars. And this could be anything. This could be like your neighbor, you have a disagreement with your neighbor over, you know, chocolate or vanilla. That's not what they fought about. But, you know, whatever it was, you know, a religious dogma, probably, or, you know, your his daughter wants to marry this guy, but this isn't going to work out, and the two families are feuding, and whatever the case is, a, a dispute over land, who owns this? I My side of the fence is over here, you see my stone wall, and your sheep came over. Whatever the fight was about, it was settled with shillelaghs. So I actually have a shillelagh. I ordered this online. Um, I'm very happy with it. It's, um, it's a short shillelagh. These, these did exist. Um, and some of them were longer. You could use them for canes. This one has the, the traditional kind of um, club end to it. Um, they do have them with more um, square-ish. Like it almost looks like a, just a tree branch. Um, 
perpendicular to the cane itself where you can actually hold on to or the stick itself where you can kind of hold on to it. I kind of like this style with the knob because it's more like a bonker. Um, one thing about this that I... And, and when they make this, this is, these are made with modern tools and stuff, and it's very, very well made, but this wasn't put in, a, in anyone's chimney for seven years or something like that, right? But one thing I, my one gripe about this is that it puts a lanyard, if you see this string right here, they drilled a hole in the ferrule and put this lanyard through it. Um, and I asked, the, not, this, not this maker, another maker when I was shopping around, I said, do you sell any of them without the lanyard? Or can you put the lanyard down here or just not at all? And they were like, oh, no, our customers like the lanyard here. And I'm like, do they? Do they? Because, and I'm going to cut back to that because if you're using it like a cudgel and you put your hand through it right here, that's not too bad, right? You've got it, boom, boom, boom. Someone tries to disarm you. You have a little bit of a, a backup there. But this wasn't the only way a shillelagh was used in combat. In fact, it, I would argue that it was infrequently used as a simple club. I mean, for the people that really knew how to fight with the shillelagh. So the first way, the most common way people know about fighting with the shillelagh, outside of just bonk, like a, like a cudgel, right, is batrach. Batrach um, from the Irish bata, meaning wood, right? Wood fighting. Um, you'd use it very similar to cane fighting. Uh, there's similarities there. Or a scrima, if you're familiar with a scrima, which is Filipino stick fighting. Boom, 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 boom. Um, there's a lot in common with those two things, even though they never came in contact with one another. But a lot of... Um, Basharak, you'd use two hands and kind of fight like this. Now, this is a very short shillelagh for that sort of style, right? But you might prefer to have something a little bit longer and almost use like staff fighting. And then from here, you can go bang. From here, you can go poke. You know, you can use the idea is that you use both ends of the shillelagh. You've got a club. You've got a spear, a poker, right? You can do lots of things when you're fighting with Batrak style. Now, you don't want to have your hand through a lanyard because guess what? You might want to do hit with that side and you can't. You can only do this. So that's why if I'm looking at this from a functional weapon, and believe me, and I'll put a picture up, but you can see that they did have lanyards. This is not inaccurate. They did have them, but this just denotes a particular fighting style. And I kind of wish that modern shillelagh makers would offer, you know, do you want to use it like this or, or not? So, which brings me to the lesser known fighting style of the shillelagh. And if you've been reading The Unlife of Lisa Cooper or The Vampires of 1863, you know what this style is. And quite simply, it's fencing. People that fought with the shillelagh knew how to fence. Not all of them. Some of them used batrach, but many of them used the shillelagh for fencing. Take a look at this photo of a gentleman from the 1800s, and I left the little words in the caption so you can read who he was and, and the dates and whatnot, but he's holding the shillelagh like this, you know, right? He's got the, the butt end, he's using like a hilt, right? Because this is the end that goes into the other man, right? This is the, <laughs> right? He's fencing. He's someone that knows how to use a shillelagh to fence with. This is my, the camera's probably going all out of focus as I'm doing this, is it? I don't know. But sorry if it is. But they fenced with it. And I'm talking about traditional fencing. Knees bent, you know, hand on the hip. You can't see what I'm doing. So yeah, I think when, when we think of the shillelagh, we always think of it like a cudgel, like a club. And yes, absolutely it was used that way. But many people used them effectively as a fencing instrument, like they would a sword, a foil, a rapier, what have you. 
Because think about it. If you're fighting with a stick and everyone around you is going, nah, 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 you're going to want to come up with something new. And what's effective? Why reinvent the wheel? They already know how to fight with, you know, people have already figured out how to fight with something that's basically a long stick with an end you hold on to and another end that you shove into someone else or bonk in with someone else. And that's called sword fighting, dagger fighting. That stuff's been around had been around for a thousand years. Why reinvent the wheel? Why not use it with the shillelagh? That's exactly what they did. So going back to the lanyard, that's why I don't like the lanyard on this particular shillelagh because you'd never have a shillelagh with a lanyard at the ferrule because if the other, you know, if your opponent's weapon goes through it, uh, uh, you know, it just doesn't make sense. So I kind of wish modern shillelagh makers would offer either no none at all one like this in case you want to you know talk about using it as a cudgel boink right or maybe one over here where the where the lanyard's actually going through here um and you're using it like a fencing weapon right um but hey i'm very very happy with this um yeah, ow <laughs> They, they hurt. They work. Um, wow, did you hear that? So, um, yeah, the shillelagh, the fencing instrument that no one remembers was a fencing instrument. The other weird thing about, and I'll just, this is just kind of an aside. When I was in Ireland, I was looking for a shillelagh. And I thought, this is probably going to be hard to find because it's not going to be like, you know, it's a weapon. They're not going to necessarily sell it in a gift store. Um there were a couple that they did, you know, a little, little, little shillelaghs like about that long and it was painted black and it said Ireland on it or whatever, you know, and they were like nine euros or whatever. So they had that, but nothing like, nothing like this, you know, and the young kids, and I say young kids, <laughs> people in their twenties and younger, um, I'd go in and I'd say, I'm looking for a place that sells shillelaghs. You know where I can buy a shillelagh? And they were all like, I've never heard of that word in my life. <laughs> they had no idea what I was talking about. I'm like, you know, a shillelagh, an Irish fighting stick. They're like, no. <laughs> One kid was 17 years old and he said, in my 17 years of earth, I've never heard of that word in my entire life. <laughs> I'm like, really? But the older folks, the people that were like my age and older, I'm like, hey, I'm looking for a shillelagh. I went into an antique store. And the guy was like, oh, yeah. He was, I don't know where you're going to find one of those. So I actually had to go online and find this. I couldn't find an actual shop in Ireland. Um, they exist. They exist. But, I mean, we were doing like a tour. You know, we're on the bus type of a thing. So unless I went, found one on my own and drove there myself, um, I wasn't going to find one. Just kind of an aside. So if you're looking for one, online is your best place to go. Uh, don't go on Amazon. Find someone that makes Irish Blackthorn shillelaghs. There's a few makers out there. This one's from McCaffrey uh, shillelaghs. McCaffrey. Um, great shop. They've got all sorts of stuff. They've got shillelaghs like this. They've got walking sticks. Um, the walking sticks actually don't have a lanyard at all. And they'd be, they have got the nice head on them like this. And they'd have the length. That would be ideal for um, batarak or even like a longer fencing in instrument. I may wind up picking up one of those. Those are pretty nice. And they have what they call swagger sticks, which are more like, you know, gentlemen's walking around like, mm -hmm, you know, that sort of thing. They're shorter. Um, but yes, if you're interested, um, I would definitely go online, find something that comes from Ireland, something that's made from Blackthorn um, for sure. Okay, so if you like this video, please give it a like. And as always, please subscribe. I post most Thursdays. And you can follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, TikTok, and threads, I guess. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to condense what I'm actually spending time on. I don't know. You can also go to jmchaley.com. Check out what's going on over there. Send me a message. Let's keep in touch. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to check out The Unlife of Lisa Cooper, which, by the way, comes out October 6th. 
I'm just going to go ahead and say that. October 6th is the date. Um, watch out for it. Uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.